2017 was an incredible year for gaming. Not only did we get Resident Evil 7, Nier Automata, Prey, and Zelda Breath of the Wild, we also got Horizon Zero Dawn, the best video game with the worst name ever. It completely caught us off guard. Sure, we saw trailers and promotional material, and yeah, it looked great, but no one thought it was going to play great. We were skeptical. Remember the Watch Dogs demo? Hell, remember the Killzone 2 trailer? As the studio behind the Space Nazi franchise, Guerrilla Games had a lot to prove. That they could do more than grimdark military shooters, and that Horizon wasn't just a bullshot promise waiting to break our hearts. And wouldn't you know it, it wasn't. Somehow, the studio responsible for the Hellgast created one of the most impressive open-world games ever. Unlike Assassin's Creed Origins, Horizon doesn't feel like an inferior version of The Witcher 3. I mean, sure, its 2017 release date gave Guerrilla plenty of time to pick up a few of CDPR's design tricks, but Horizon has a voice of its own. And what a voice it is. It's one of the most creative and addictive video games of the past decade, if only because it takes the model established in The Witcher 3 and manages to improve on almost all of its shortcomings. Granted, there weren't many shortcomings to improve on, but it's impressive nonetheless. Set in a post-post-post-apocalyptic future, Horizon Zero Dawn puts players in control of Aloy, a girl struggling to find a place in the world that has no place for her. She's an outcast, raised by a surrogate father who's as much a pariah as she is. It's a tough break for her, as Aloy wants nothing more than to learn the truth about where she comes from. Too bad outcasts are forbidden from interacting with the very tribesmen who can help her. Why, you ask? Well, they're not telling, so it's up to Aloy to learn the truth on her own. Of course, this is easier said than done. As it turns out, humanity has been bumped to the bottom of the food chain by mechanical dinosaurs. You see, thanks to some unknown cataclysm, civilization has fallen and people have been reduced to living in what is essentially a new stone age. And the machines? They rule the world with an iron jaw. Whoever said the meek shall inherit the earth never had to face down a storm bird. The truth of what happened to the world exists out there, buried in the ruins of the humanity that once was. And it's up to Aloy to find them if she's to discover the truth behind her identity. That's the gist of Horizon's premise. Surprisingly, for a narrative rooted in a sci-fi trope, Gorilla manages to keep it fresh. The killer machine stuff intersects with Aloy's quest of self-discovery. It starts out small, with the timbre being personal, but the stakes escalate to world-ending proportions. This should hurt the tone of the story, but Gorilla never loses sight of Horizon's emotional core, Aloy herself. She's the driving force behind the narrative. The central mystery of who she is and what connects her to the past sends her sprawling across a massive open world, spelunking ancient ruins to do battle with deadly machines and crazed zealots. It's fantastical in every sense. There are emotional highs and lows, with the story drip-feeding details about the world in a way that tantalizes and frustrates, and I mean this in a good way. Answers are hard-earned, but when they come, they're often surprising, and always worth it. The gravitational pull of its plot is one of the few things Horizon does better than The Witcher 3. Too bad Aloy isn't as interesting as the mystery was drives her. Whereas Geralt and Ciri are the emotional core of The Witcher 3, Aloy functions as Horizon's beating heart. However, not because she's got depth, but because her arc is intimately tied to the momentum of the narrative. As a result, she ends up feeling kind of shallow. Now, before you break out the pitchforks, let me just say that despite my issues with her characterization, I actually like Aloy. For one, it's awesome to have a female protagonist who isn't really sexualized in any way. Even better, the script never draws attention to her being a woman. She's quippy, earnest, and doesn't give a damn about tradition, which is something that resonates with the iconoclast in me but she's too damn perfect. Let's get the obvious out of the way. It makes zero sense that she grasps old world technology as effortlessly as she does. Even after learning her origin, this goes unremarked upon, which makes it feel like an oversight. Also, for a person who's got her entire life shunned by all of society, Aloy is unrealistically well-adjusted. There's no awkwardness to her, nor is she curt. She occasionally offers token sentiments of resentment, but the game is quick to brush these aside. Gorilla makes no attempt to develop her outside of the mystery of her parentage, and as a result, we get a character whose arc is synonymous with the plot. Even the obvious moments for development are squandered. When Rost, her adopted father, dies, she isn't terribly broken up about it. Sure, she mourns, but that grief is short-lived. Rost was all she knew, yet Aloy doesn't reflect on him or seek any opportunities to learn more about him as a person. 
Hell, Silence gets more play than Rost. You can interrogate every other character in the Frozen Wilds about Silence. Rost, on the other hand? By the second act, he's all but forgotten. Against all odds, Aloy ended up with the constitution and moral compass of a typical lawful good protagonist. I'm not entirely sold on this, but if this is the character Gorilla wanted to create, I can play along. Aloy is a lawful good agent, fine, but this archetype tends to be boring and Aloy is no exception. Most authors are aware of this, so they'll try to mitigate this any way they can. One route is to create obstacles which challenge these characters politically or philosophically. For example, Captain America is the ultimate Boy Scout, but in Civil War, his conviction is weaponized against him and he's all the better for it. A blundered mission in Lagos results with many innocent lives lost. The Avengers take heat for their vigilante activities, which prompts the United Nations to create a system of accountability called the Sokovia Accords. Half of the Avengers want to sign it, half of the Avengers don't, with Captain America leading the do not want side of that divide. This puts him at odds with not only half his teammates, but half the audience who are left questioning the wisdom of his choices. His unwillingness to compromise on the greater good results with a character who is not only flawed, but more interesting. It doesn't matter that Cap's wrong about the Sokovia Accords, because he believes he's right. And the writers made his counter-argument plausible enough for viewers to empathize with. Aloy would have been well-suited for this kind of treatment, an ideological challenge of some kind. But no such luck. Maybe because Gorilla wanted her to be a positive role model for younger girls, Maybe because Aloy is meant to balance out the emotional spectrum of her peers. Who knows, your guess is as good as mine. Though one thing is certain, secondary characters are handled far more deftly. Take Nil, for instance. He's a single-issue voter who cares only about one thing, killing bandits. To him, the act is akin to a sport. Nil borders on sociopathy, but his motivations are understandable. It ends up making him empathetic despite him taking pleasure in his monstrous brand of vigilante justice. Then there's Nakoa, a woman who accepts banishment from her homeland in order to avenge her murdered father. Unlike Aloy, she's not much good in a fight, but her desire for vengeance instills her with a tragically empathetic goal. No matter what, there's no happy ending for Nakoa. Killing won't bring her father back and abandoning her tribe leaves her homeless, but that's her cross to bear. While most of the secondary characters are more interesting than Aloy, they're nowhere near perfect. Don't get me wrong, the writing is mostly good across the board, and many have interesting arcs, but they're a far cry from the morally complex inhabitants of Temeria. It's a bummer, since it's obvious Gorilla took cues from The Witcher 3 in the writing and quest design department. Then again, it's not necessarily fair to grade Horizon against what many consider to be one of the best written video games of all time. At the very least, Horizon's secondary characters show that the shortcomings in Aloy's characterizations are the exception, not the rule. I know this is going to be an unpopular opinion with many, but I think Ashley Birch's performance doesn't help the character. I don't doubt her ability as an actor, but her range is usually stuck in Kristen Stewart-level breathlessness. Yes, there are moments when Birch delivers on those emotional highs, but they're few and far between. Geralt's flat affectation was part of his characterization. Aloy's just feels like bad voice direction. In fact, the majority of the voice acting in Horizon isn't great. There's a sterility and general lack of naturalism to most of it. Though, that's not my biggest gripe with it. It's the game's use of modern English which really kills it for me. I'll admit this is a pet peeve, not a legitimate complaint, but I can't help but envision a version of Horizon where characters speak using some English hybrid dialect, similar to the post-apocalyptic cast of Cloud Atlas. Cat kids dying! What? Shot on a scorpion fish. You can save her. She got special parts in that gear bag. What'll save her? That's a true, true. Percy and Council swear by special order. Say, I can't go play Lady Sanmi for every fate twisty wrong and click fingers make right. Or if Gorilla took it one step further and went the Far Cry primal route, creating an entirely fictitious language with the help of linguistics experts. I drown her! It would be a ridiculous undertaking, but my god would it have gone a long way in selling the setting. Not that the game needs any help with that. Horizon inspires a feeling of astonishment that never truly goes away. Its art direction is equal parts vivid and dynamic. There are lush forests, arid deserts, snowy mountains, all marvelously rendered on hardware that feels legitimately next-gen. The game is obnoxiously pretty, and Gorilla knows it, which is why the UI is kept at a minimum. 
A dynamic HUD lets the visuals breathe, and a lack of a minimap keeps things clean and immersive. The Witcher 3 constantly pulled your eyes away from its world to follow a GPS pathfinder. Horizon smartly ditches this method for the tried but true waypoint. When your game looks this good, you want to show it off. The open world is so pretty that Guerrilla eventually patched in a fairly robust photo mode, which I think is the best feature to come out of modern gaming. You can lose a surprising amount of time trying to frame that perfect shot. Photo mode will help you appreciate the artistry and natural beauty of the setting. You'll slow down to lose yourself in a sunset, in the rosy glow of a sun-kissed arch. You'll take notice of landmarks you would otherwise be sprinting or riding by. Landmarks which may seem familiar if you've ever spent any time in the American West. Something that might not be immediately apparent is Horizon's open world takes place in the geographic wonderlands of Colorado and Utah. The game doesn't remark on it, you're just expected to figure it out on your own. But the landmarks are all there. The Delicate Arch, Hallett Peak, Sports Authority Field, the Red Rocks Amphitheater, the Pikes Peak Range Riders Memorial, and more. Not knowing what these are won't diminish your enjoyment of the game, but if you're even remotely familiar with them, then Horizon's setting will feel that much more impactful. The world has moved on, and civilization with it. That these landmarks still exist should put things into perspective, and perspective is important, as it helps us deal with hard truths. We've all got problems. Some of those problems might seem insurmountable, but they're not, once you have perspective. Want to know the best place to find it? Try taking a trip out of the city to marvel at things infinitely older than you. A few years back, I was depressed about some life choices I had made. So I decided to take a 10-day pilgrimage cross-country with some friends, starting in New York and ending in California. While the stretch between home and Kansas was entertaining enough, the trip didn't really begin until we hit Colorado. That's when the grasslands and amber waves of grain gave way to temples of granite, and when my problems began to feel far smaller. The Grand Canyon was a sobering sight. How could it not be? When you're staring into a 70 million year old crack in the earth, it's hard not to feel a little humbled and I carry that humility with me past the Great Plains, through Arches National Park, all the way to the Pacific Coast Highway, with each and every natural wonder grounding me further. Perspective. It won't make your problems go away, but it will emotionally fortify you for a lot of the world's bullshit. Sometimes, that makes all the difference. Horizon's setting does a good job approximating that feeling. It fills the world with pathos in the knowledge that civilization has perished and that the world could care less. Mother Nature has reclaimed what we stole from her. The skeletal remains of man-made structures are overgrown by moss and earth. Everywhere you look are grave markers to a culture that reached too far, too fast. It's a strangely beautiful sight, one that invites exploration, and you'll be doing a lot of exploring, which means you'll need to be ready to fight for your life. Luckily, Aloy knows her way around the bow and spear. There are a couple of ways to engage enemies. If you prefer the silent method, then stick to the shadows and pick them off one by one. Be warned, not every baddie can be eliminated with a stealth kill and most enemies are prone to patrol around, so the roguish approach will only take you so far. Aloy also has the ability to override machines, meaning players can pit robot against robot in a fight to the death. It's just as entertaining as it sounds. When the difficulty ramps up, overriding can be a real lifesaver. Though not every machine is immediately hackable, Aloy will need to unlock the ability to override different machines by exploring high-tech dungeons called cauldrons. These are a highlight. Not only do they break up the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, but every cauldron is different and has a unique central thesis. Sadly, there aren't many of them, but what few there are are a real treat. While you can sneak your way past plenty of encounters, you're eventually going to have to fight. Thankfully, the combat in Horizon is incredibly satisfying. Where The Witcher 3 is plotting, Horizon is breakneck. It's got a lot of depth in a way that's not immediately apparent. The basic idea is that every machine is made up of individual components, and each component has its own strength and weakness. In most other games, figuring those out would be a trial and error experience, but Horizon isn't most other games. You see, very early on, Aloy finds a device called a Focus, which allows her to scan enemies for vulnerabilities. Armed with this, she can identify what kind of attack a baddie is susceptible to, Fire, blunt damage, tear, etc, etc. I know what you're thinking. That sounds like cheating. But consider this. Every enemy is made up of multiple components. Some might have two or three. Some might have as many as ten. 
and each of those components will have multiple strengths and weaknesses which can differ radically from machine to machine. Which means without the focus, players would be required to remember a bunch of combinations of vulnerabilities for 24 different machine types, and that's before even factoring in the machines added by the DLC. Sure, you could refer to the enemy codex in the menu, but that takes time, which would kill the momentum of combat, which would be a terrible idea, as the pacing of these fights is what makes Horizon's combat so sublime. Battles are tense, requiring constant motion and on-the-fly strategizing. Smaller enemies will try to overwhelm you with numbers, but with a few well-placed shots or traps, you'll come out the other end just fine. Larger encounters, however, will test you. Even one-on-one -on -one battles against the heavier hitters will have players using everything in their arsenal. And the intensity only ramps up. As you purchase more weapons, your verb list expands, giving you even more options in how you choose to fight. Planning an ambush? Use a trip caster to set up an electric tripwire, then lay out a proximity mine or two as extra security. Got a thunder jaw breathing down your neck? Use the rope caster to bind him in place, then shoot the disc launcher off his back. While he's struggling to get free, unload on him with his own weapon. They'll hate you for it. There's a staggering amount of strategy that goes into even the smallest encounters. And the possibilities only increase when you start infusing elemental affinities to your weapons. It's great stuff, really. Unfortunately, it's not without a few hiccups. Human encounters are a bit of a drag, feeling floaty and without heft. Honestly, it's not bad, it's just that the tactical brilliance of the machine fights are traded in for boring-ass headshots. And there's a lot of it, so it'll outstay its welcome very quickly. Also not bad, but kind of a bummer are the investigative missions. Just like in The Witcher 3, Aloy will have to use her version of Detective Vision to find clues and parse crime scenes. While none of it is poorly handled, it also doesn't do anything to improve upon the mechanics used by Geralt. The only difference is, in Horizon, you don't have to hold down a button. Following the breadcrumb trail is as easy as toggling on a light switch. Yeah, it's a refinement, I suppose, but I do feel like this might have been a missed opportunity. Gorilla easily could have made these moments more engaging. For example, the vanishing of Ethan Carter has investigative bits as well, but players have to reconstruct the events of a crime scene in chronological order in order to progress. Even the series that inspired Detective Vision found ways to improve on it in almost every entry. If you're going to crib these mechanics, why not crib the best iterations of them? Climbing is a drag too. These moments are more uncharted than Assassin's Creed, forcing players to follow a predetermined path which does little to stimulate or excite. Just vaguely point the analog stick in the right direction, and Aloy does all the work. It's essentially a cutscene. Worse, jumps between large gaps are always accompanied by a Zack Snyder-esque slow motion effect. There's no danger of falling, so histrionics like this just come off as pointless. Finally, there's the map. Unlike The Witcher 3, Horizon keeps its Ubisoft tendencies at a minimum. Yes, there's a wealth of things to do in the world, but it never feels excessive or inconsequential. There are abandoned camps, cauldrons, corruption zones, and hunting grounds. That's about it, really. Even a number of secondary missions pale in comparison to many of its peers. It's actually a refreshing change of pace. Though there is some Ubisoft DNA to be found. Thankfully, it's the good kind of Ubisoft. Horizon's got scalable towers in the forms of tall necks, roaming dino mechs which defog the map after being overridden. Don't roll your eyes. These are not the dull hold up affairs of Assassin's Creed's towers. These instead function more like Far Cries, with the journey upward usually being some type of navigational puzzle. It's honestly nothing new, but it's certainly the most novel interpretation of this mechanic. What's probably the most Ubisoft aspect of the game is how it teases its biggest secret. Like in many Assassin's Creeds, players will be able to find the game's ultimate armor locked behind a massive door. There are glass panes everywhere, so you'll be able to see it but not touch it. Gorilla is all but winking at you. Unlocking said door involves finding various power cells scattered throughout the map. Mercifully, these don't require solving any inane puzzles, just some diligent exploration. And once you get it, you'll quickly realize how worth the effort it was. You see, healing usually involves using a potion or munching on herbs. Potions are few and far between, but medicinal plants are everywhere, so if you don't want to end up pushing up daisies, you're going to find yourself picking posies more often than not. The Shield Weaver armor negates this entirely. Besides granting a resistance to fire and a stealth bonus, the armor projects an energy shield around Aloy, which absorbs all damage until it's depleted. Then it simply needs to recharge, which happens relatively quickly. This is a huge deal, as it essentially gives you a secondary life bar that regenerates. The Shield Weaver armor changes the way you play the game, meaning the post-combat ritual of having to replenish medicinal herbs is all but abolished. It doesn't make you immortal, you can still bite it if you're not careful, but it does give you a lot more wiggle room, which justifies it as a late-game reward. 
Also a mixed bag are the inclusions of audio and video logs. Ever a staple of non-linear storytelling, some people love it, some people hate it. Personally, I'm on the love side of that gulf, especially here, as the stories told in Horizon tend to be well-written and well-acted, sometimes more so than the actual cutscenes. On a side note, while I won't be covering the Frozen Wilds in this video, I can say it features audio logs about a garage punk duo which happens to be one of the most moving stories I've heard in a long time. So to the naysayers out there, don't sleep on audio logs. They've got a lot to offer. For what might be the first time ever in AAA gaming history, the gameplay in the final product looks exactly like the gameplay in the reveal demo. When playing Horizon, I feel just as empowered and just as crafty as whoever was controlling Aloy on the Sony stage back in 2015. Horizon didn't succumb to the same failings as Assassin's Creed Unity or Watch Dogs. Somehow, Gorilla pulled it off. Call it technical wizardry if you want. I'll call it a triumph. While The Witcher 3 remains the reigning champion of writing and characters, Horizon Zero Dawn takes no prisoners in the gameplay and story department. It may not hit all the marks, but I'll be damned if it wasn't a jaw-dropping experience from beginning to end. Between The Witcher 3 and Horizon, future open-world games have some very big shoes to fill. And on October 27, 2017, another contender approached the plate. 